what up? All right. Um. So, uh, we got episode one, season one of the Ricky Gervais show. Okay. Okay. Ricky Gervais. Yes. Yeah, man. Funny guy. Yes. Yes. Hilarious. Yeah. He's hilarious. This show is with uh, Ricky Gervais, Carl Pilkington. Okay. And okay. Uh, Stephen Merchant. Stephen Merchant. Yes. All right. All right. So we have the star of the Idiot of Abroad. Yes. Yeah, man. And um, yeah, the other dude, he's done a couple of HBO shows. It's pretty funny. funny. Oh, Stephen. Hello, yeah, ladies. Man. Hello, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> funny show. Hello, ladies. Yeah, man. Yeah. Ready? Yes. Stephen Merchant Real life. and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless <laughs> conversations. This is one of them. That's the glass, all right? <laughs> Hello and welcome Stevens to the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, Hello. and the little round headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. Show. Now, you uh, probably know me from such works as The Office and Extras, uh, uh, Stephen being my um, co-writer and co-director on those things. For those people who are not so aware of Carl Pilkington, um, he was our producer sort of given to us when we first started on uh, XFM. Um, <laughs> and uh, you're thinking, well, why are we doing a podcast? It's because I'd like to be in a room with Carl Pilkington. Mm. You know, like some people go and help sort of chimps. <laughs> Do they? Yeah. Well, they go to the, you know, the, yeah, the jungles and things. And yeah. How about a little sort of endangered species? Dying Fossey or whatever. Exactly, You're yeah. very much the Dying Fossey of the, of the, the, of the Manchester of, scene. Of the, of the <laughs> yeah, little bald mank world. And Carl Pilkington is, is an ongoing experiment for me because I've seen him blossom from an idiot into an imbecile. <laughs> and I want, I want to see it. Look at the way he's looking at us. Look at that. He's got a perfectly round head. Um, and that's why I'm doing this um His podcast. head is round. Oh, what do you think about all this? Um, His head is very just, round. I mean, we are living in that sort of era now, aren't we? Like, you need to be able to listen to stuff on demand when you want it and stuff. I know yeah. you, you are, you're not a fan of the iPod in general, are you? Or any of the MP3 things, you're concerned. Uh, it's, I'm warm into it. But this is what's amazing about Carl. Even though he's talking about things like MP3 players, computers, uh, iPods, he sounds like he's he was found in a glacier and, and thawed out. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's sort of taught to yeah. speak. We're, we're a couple of high school guys who found him, and we're, we're trying to ingratiate him in the scene. Uh, oh man, gang. <laughs> trying to pass him off to someone from the modern day. No, no. But, but my thing with with iPods is now, do we need them? Do you know what I mean? We're, we're living in that era now where we have invented most of the stuff that we need <laughs> and now we're just messing about they said that in 1900 someone actually said everything that's to be invented has already been invented they what? said that in 1900 <laughs> and how wrong were they no but what what came out what, at what point what was invented in that year where they went right that's it now the 20th century <laughs> think what happened in the 20th century computers go on well planes <laughs> <laughs> yeah but is that a good thing planes and that do you need to do you need a plane really wouldn't it have been better if we all stuck where we should be instead of traveling about war, war, well look wars wars happening isn't it because everyone's saying well now we can fly we'll go over there and so I'm, there were no that. wars prior to the invention of the airplane <laughs> not like not like there is today right but what i'm saying is the more the, the world's got smaller on it everyone's saying that right <laughs> what but, you know the way i was saying to you the other day uh you know we now go to places where we shouldn't go. People go on holiday to places where you've got to have an injection before you go there. Yeah. Forget it then. Africa. That, that, that's a warning. Don't well, worry. I'm with you on that. I, I don't want to enter a country where I have to have an injection to stop me from dying while I'm in that country. I totally <laughs> no. agree with you on that. So what yeah. happened is, so they invented the plane yeah, and it's like, oh, let's go on holiday. And then they go, oh, I die now. Oh, well, you've got to invent something. Let's invent an injection. And then it's like, right, well, what, what else do we need to go to that place? There's a lot of faffing. <laughs> so what I'm saying is... I'm, is that I'm, a place, a lot of faffing? What, what I'm saying is, you know, Steve's travelled more than I have. You've been to, like, dangerous places. I've been to places where you need injections, yeah. 
Yeah, but why? Wow. Because it's fascinating, isn't it? You know, don't you not believe in the idea of uh, travel broadens the mind? You know, wow. it makes you experience other ways of life, other ways of thinking. It just enriches you as a human being. That's the whole reason people go travelling. Well, since the invention traveling. of the telly, you don't have to go that far yeah. to see it. You're absolutely it. right. So uh, there you go, then. <laughs> the telly was the 20th century, wasn't it? Yeah, it's pretty good. So where would, good you, where would you stop, then? You'd stop making stuff now? Stop inventing stuff right now? If we're going to invent something, right, forget, like, the traditional way of people having kids, right? The way they, you know, have it away in that. You know, oh, what, do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? No, you know, like, the, the way that, you know, we, we have kids and stuff. If it'd be good if what happened was to, to control it is if man and woman, right, they sort of, they're born and that, they enjoy their life, they learn a lot, they live to be about... 78, I think, by that point. So specific. Yeah, 78. <laughs> no, well, seven, by 78, I reckon you've sort of got to that point where you go, do you know what, I've done everything I'm going to do. If you haven't bungee jumped by the time you're 78, you're not going to do it. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like... Your ears you, come off. You've, you've done it all now. Yeah. And then you die, right? Uh, so say if everyone had that, yeah. they lived to be 78. Mm. But then, just as you die, you, you have a little baby inside you. <coughs> and as you die, your life carries on. So, Wait, how is this you, happening? Sorry, are you mental? No, no, but don't you think... I mean, what? I've never heard such dribble. You say you're saying that, Wait. if Newton said it, you'd go, hmm, uh, interesting. Yeah. That's, that's what annoys me. I know it is, Carl. He never would. Look, He'd never say it, that's the point. I, if you no. never say it, if you never I say it... I don't understand what you're talking about there. What, how, how, how was it? How was there a little baby in a 78-year-old? No, what I'm saying is it's like an apple, where... <laughs> The apple grows and it's got its little baby pips in it, and and the apple goes uh, and the seeds are planted and a new one's born. But what? that's what happens. But that is what reproduction is. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying babies aren't being born left, right, and centre. It's 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 controlled, so that <laughs> as someone dies, someone's born. But Carl, <laughs> stop. Yeah. Who, whose responsibility is Look, this? If you don't want to do uh, it, we won't do it. But is I'm it just... supposed to be nature? Has <laughs> nature got to, to develop humans so that we act that way? We, we live that well, way? I or like, is this a scientific experiment? Well, I like, he, said, he said to you then, he said, Look, if you don't want to do it, we don't need to do it. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you're up for it, <laughs> yeah. we'll sort it out. Yeah. We can do that. We'll have a whit round. So no, we can do the I, research. I, I just think, at the end of the day, we've got to do something. And is anyone keeping an eye on this and, and looking at what we can do uh. next to control the population thing? It does my head in that I've got to live in London for work and what have you. And there's loads of people here. And, you know, forget going out on a Saturday night, it's too busy. And you can't move and they keep... I mean, what annoys me about London So is, your solution is that 78-year-old women have little babies inside them. And, and as they slip away into death, the little babies... And how is that baby then who raised? Looks who looks the after the baby? Because it's a pretty good system, <laughs> having a baby while you're young enough to look after that baby and make sure it lives yeah. to, uh, you know, reproductive age itself. I mean, that, yeah. that's, that system's been working for years. Nature's sort of sorted it out. Yeah. Natural selection <coughs> and evolution sort of makes that a, a good model. But wait a minute, Nature. Pop that on hold, because Carl Pilkington's got an idea. <laughs> yeah. Mm. It's just, it was just, it was, that's what it was, just an idea. Yeah, well, it was, you know, it was nonsense. I mean, it was the ramblings of it was the ramblings of someone you'd find uh, by themselves in a uh, hospital eating flies. <laughs> this is the sort of thing you find when uh, if they find uh, maybe a, a pamphlet or a, a booklet written by a psychopath. <laughs> you know, someone just before yes. they went on a rampage and then turned the gun on themselves, they yeah. go through their possessions and they find a book and it's got weird drawings, women with knives in their face, yeah. and this kind of garbage. In fact, I saw uh, I saw a similar sort of theory written out on a wall, but it was written in shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, all I'm all I'm saying is I think it's you know, when people die normally, everyone's fed up about it, aren't they, and a bit down. But if when you if if when you pass away, you go, Oh, we're gonna miss Gladys or whatever but then there's this okay, new life brought in. Or something. Okay. It's almost I like a... <laughs> bad news but, but you're talking about it like someone could pick this idea up and run with it. Like you've given them <laughs> no. enough information to do it. How is this possible? Where does she get That's the baby good. from? Uh, how, 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 why does it grow? Why grow it in, a, in Gladys' is, belly? It why wouldn't work. It in a drawer? <laughs> but what I'm saying is... Ready to go, just add water. <laughs> I mean, Who this, looks this, after this, son of Gladys? Look, there look. is no theory here. There's no... Th it's the ramblings of a, a madman. What I'm saying is, though, the body's always changing, isn't it? From caveman to now, or whatever. <laughs> in some changing. cases. And they're always finding out more and more. Like I read the other day uh, about some how cases. Uh, they, they say, in general, spiders, like they say, you know, people have six senses. Yeah. Yeah. Insects. There's loads more than that. Some don't need <laughs>
<laughs> right, and there's this I'm one. Say, show me that you've got one. <laughs> no, right, and, and there's this one that's knocking about. Go on. That, uh, what it is, say if I'm, say if I'm in, a, in a pub, right, mm. and I'm, I'm just doing a crossword or whatever. Unlikely, but cool. And uh, <laughs> there's some woman who's walked in, right, and she's staring at me. Yeah. I know she's looking at me, and I look up and I look round, she's looking at me. Right. And they're saying that's a new sense that they, that they found out from, like you know, doing tests and what have you. Yeah, it's rubbish. And they're saying okay. that's been around <laughs> well, it, since well, since like man and dinosaur was knocking about. They 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 they've stopped. No, they've because explained I, I it. I think it's safe to assume that uh, you know that with your perfectly round head, people are always stopping. And no, looking. but they explain <laughs> that you just know that they're probably going to be someone there if they, you get right. They said it's from the time when like caveman was like wandering about, and he'd go on a minute. And he'd look around, there's a dinosaur there or whatever, and he'd, right, he'd leg it. Right, this is, this is nonsense. One, it's one, not... I hate it when people use the term when caveman was wandering <laughs> around. Caveman and dinosaurs, oh, they used to live together, yeah. Oh, that's the same era. Yeah, what have you been watching? Raquel Welsh. What do you mean? Well, what do you mean caveman wandering, knocking around with a dinosaur? You know the Flintstones is only partly based on fact. <laughs> <coughs> dinosaurs and man did not coexist. The dinosaurs had long gone before man arrived. Extinct. Kaput. Hmm. No, you don't, well, you don't believe us? Well, you don't believe us because you, you've seen... Because <laughs> you saw that film where they took pictures of lizards and magnified them and put them next to men in films so they didn't know they were fighting. Yeah. No, but why, why couldn't that have happened? What is the film uh, with Raquel Welsh? Um, a million years BC. A million years BC or something. A million yeah. years BC. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, but... <laughs> she had a sort of woolly mammoth bikini. Fact. But why, <laughs> why weren't the dinosaurs back then just like how we have... Dogs now, in a way. He's watching the Flintstones. He's, watching the he's thinking of the Flintstones. Yeah. That's what he's when thinking. When he puts like, the saber tooth tiger yeah, and, yeah. and he, and he mixes thing. his concrete in a pelican. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, just, I just think that they, there must have been a crossover point. Why? Why do you say that? Why do you think there must have been there a crossover must have been. point? Because if nothing was knocking about at any point, how did anything carry on? I know. I, exactly. <laughs> why, 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 why didn't Hitler meet Nero? It's weird, isn't it? There must have been a crossover. They must have met somewhere. They must have met at a party somewhere. <laughs> they mixed in similar circles. Yeah. They must have bumped into... S I can't believe it. Oh, forget <laughs> it. Oh. Damn. I met uh, Derek Akora the other week. Oh, yeah. Right. Now, and who's he? Which one's he? He's a... Is he, is he a medium? He can contact the dead, is that right? He just chats to him and that, sure. passes messages on. Nice of him. So I said, oh, tell us something a bit weird and that. So he mm. said, what do you want to know? I said, just, just something weird. So he goes, all right then. He said, uh, here's one for you, right? And he said, uh, there's this pub out in the country. And uh, he said, there's this mug. Do you know those old mugs that they have where they used to... They used to, like, leave their own cup knocking like about, didn't they? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The tankard thing. Yeah. So, uh, so there was there was one of them mugs in there, right? And everybody. Tankard. Like, Let's use tankard if we've right, established that. Tankard, yeah. Because yeah. you're the only mug in this story. Right. Believe in it all. Yeah. High five. <laughs> Great. So this tankard's knocking about, right? And everyone who's running the pub keeps going, "Oh, I wish they'd stop leaving this tankard about," right? Mm -hmm. And they pick it up. <laughs> it must be a pain. <laughs> Having a, a tiny small tankard in a pub, that must be a real grind. So, so every t they sort of picked it up and went, we'll have to wash that, and they popped it on a different mm. sideboard. Next thing you know, that person who's touched it died, right? Sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, they getting through bar staff. So they, got, so they kept getting a new staff and that, and they were like, oh, what's the connection here? <laughs> <laughs> what's the connection here? Oh, God. So they get a vicar in. Of course they do. And they go, look, um, there's a lot of weird stuff going on here. This, <laughs> This this tankard. Every time someone touches it, they die. So he said, "Leave it with me." He gets his um, special <coughs> water out and what have you. He comes round, does a little prayer, sprinkles it. He goes, "Right, not a problem. Don't worry about it." He picks it up, chucks it in the bin. Guess what? What? Dies in a crash on the way. Because <laughs> he picked it up. Well, but 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 Carl, you're telling me this like it's fact, <laughs> and I'm meant to go. That's amazing. Don't eat Cora. He told me. <laughs> Carl, I have, I have, I have, I have no opinion of that story, other than I'm pretty sure there was absolutely no connection between touching the tankard and him dying. That's Probably what I'm sure. Right. Of. It's not just him, though, is it? I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I, you know, I'm not going to even um, uh, contest the, the chain of events. All I'm saying is there is no connection. There is no connection possible because I believe in logic and the laws of the universe. Yeah, but what I mean, you never pick up a vibe of. Like, I, I, I've got a mate, right, uh, who uh, a vibe. He's, he's living in this big 
stately home. Right, and he's living in there now. He pays hundred pound a month. Curry There's about pounds. eighty rooms, Gee. and uh, it's this big stately house, might have you. And I went, I went down there. He said, "Oh, come down and have a look." Right, and from outside, you go, oh, "This is brilliant. It's like something out of, you know, like the Man of Born or something." You go, "This is this is impressive," but then when you get in, it's like it's a wreck, <laughs> and, and we go in, and all the floors are like a wreck and rotten and stuff. And I looked at the wall, and there was like a little piece of paper stuck on the wall, oh. right? And I said, what's this here? So I wandered over, right? Got right up close to it, and somebody had wrote it. <laughs> somebody had wrote it. No. Wrote it. <laughs> somebody had wrote it. No, I love someone... this. Right, go on. Yeah, go on. So, sorry, so sorry, there's, but... there's a little sign there, right? And I go up to it, and it says, flies, right? With an arrow. <laughs> flies, like, flies this way, yep. right? I think that's, that's a bit weird. So I follow the arrow, right? which goes to this corner where there's a shelf, about 3,000 dead flies on it. Yeah. Oh, my God. What the Corn hell? stuck on the top. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, right. that's weird, isn't it? That is weird. That is, that weird, is weird, right? weird. So I'm looking at that, and there's, there's loads of stuff on the floor and that bits of paper. Picked up this bit of paper, right? Mm. And it had, uh, like, in biro and that. It looked really old, like it'd been there years. And it had uh, uh, something like... Need nappies, dummy, right? Uh, blankets, <laughs> like all this, like all stuff for like. And I turned it over, Baby. right? And it said, none of this now needed. Baby dead. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> now that's weird, isn't it? Now that's what I'm talking about. When you get a bad vibe, you go, that's that's <laughs> who's been in here. Yeah. <laughs> It's bad vibe. It's just based on the fact that your mate's in charge. <laughs> yeah, that's terrifying. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so it's like saying, are we scared uh, of the dark? Yes, it's, I understand why people are scared of the dark. I'm a little bit scared of the dark. You're walking along. Because you don't know what's in it. Yeah, you don't yeah. know what's in the darkness. That's why people get nervous. It doesn't mean you have to make the leap then that you've got some paranormal sense. Oh, my God, I'm Carl Pilkington. And hang on, just like Derek Akora, I have sensed something strange and evil in this room. Wait a minute, <laughs> there's some flies in a condom. <laughs> I was right all along. That is weird. Flies in a Johnny equals badness. <laughs> <laughs> the flies in the condom was weird. It's now. weird. I don't know. But, it's but, but, but the note. The note. <laughs> Yeah, I just think of his face when he uh, saw that. We lit my torchlight. You <laughs> must have been terrified. It's a bit, it's a bit odd, isn't it? Carl has some wild and weird ideas. Yeah, man. Imagination. Wild and weird mind. Imagination. Yeah, man. man. (laughs) What did you say? What was his idea? The uh, baby inside of the 78-year-old person or woman? (laughs) Yeah. That'd be dope, though. Population control. That's what he said. But then you would live forever, though. Like, if you... Every time you got to 78, you just had a baby inside. Well, I didn't know... I don't, he didn't specify if it would be your life starting over. It would be like a, somebody else's life. Or, so you have to die at 78? Yeah, you would die at 78. I don't And then do the that. baby would come out. And then the baby would have nobody to take care of it. It's a terrible life. Unless that baby was me. <laughs> like, I would do it if that baby was me. If I can live another life. Recycle myself. Oh, yeah. That's a nobody. Just go into your family's hands. Yeah. You know? It's like um, Benjamin Button. Yeah. Fucking, uh, he got old. No, 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 no. What, did, what happened? He got old and then he got young? Yeah. No, no, no. He, he started, started out. Young. He started He started old. Oh, yeah, he looked old. He started as an as old he baby. he got older, he looked younger. And then when he got younger, when he got older, he looked younger. Yeah. And then he died when he was a baby. He died looking like a baby. Like a newborn, I guess. It's kind of messed up. I wouldn't want to die. Damn. Mm-hmm. But yeah. yeah. I wonder if that disease is actually true. It is. They do have actual, like, you know, young people, you know, look, you know, 10 year olds that look like they're 70. Hmm. Or, and they have, like, Andy Melanakis. Is, Mel- Mel- Melanakis? is that his yeah, name? Yeah, yeah. He's like and 60, they- but he looks like 13. Yeah, I see that. Especially like ten years ago. <laughs> like twenty years ago, he was like he was like thirty five, but he looked twelve. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That shit was scary. 
So, I mean, and I think they got the reverse. There's a lot of actors out there got Benjamin Button to be. No, I'm just playing. Probably. <laughs> yeah, a lot of weird stuff going on with actors. <laughs> no, but, um, Everybody got that disease. You got plastic surgery and stuff. You can look like whatever yeah. you want to look like. Yeah, I just had plastic surgery. Now yeah. I got Benjamin Button. Yeah. <laughs> 